Now, how do we pick the architecture in practice? There's all kinds of advice out there on the internet, things like for input units, it's going to be your number of features, for output units, the number of label classes. For the hidden layers, start small. Why start small with the hidden layers? Overfitting. Even here, even within this class of algorithms, fewer hidden layers is a simpler algorithm than more hidden layers. And if you don't believe me, do that homework exercise of do I hate Cassie yet and see just how much more complex the recipe gets as you add each layer. And hidden units, there's all kinds of crazy cool different architecture options. Some simple ones would be same number of units in every layer, so like a pipe, or like a triangle, a funnel, where you start big and you get fewer and fewer as you get to the solution, but there's many others. Why even listen to me when you can play with it yourself? You're like, I don't want to play with it myself because you just told me it's so much effort to try coding it up. We have a fun thing called TensorFlow Playground. You can click on that link and then you go be the architect and without writing a single line of code, you can go and see how different architectures affect the solution. So you can say, I want plus plus four hidden layers and I want to put eight neurons in the first one and I want to put two in the second one and three in the third one and so forth. And you're like, what activation function do I want? I want the hipster one or I want the standard one or whatever else. You take that from the drop down and you see how that affects your results on your output. And you'll see that there are going to be different scores for training and for testing. And you'll notice that you tend to do better, less loss in the training than in the testing.